Scrappy Peep, Susanna here today for ThermoWeb, and I have a layout to share with you showing you how you can use foil without a hot laminator. So that is the layout that we're creating, and you see all that good foil there. This is also, also featuring the new Maker Forte foil from ThermoWeb. So I have a Vicky Booten stencil, and I am applying Duo. Um, transfer gel. So very important that you make sure there's different kinds of transfer gel out there and you want to make sure you have the duo because the duo is the one that's going to let you be able to not use a laminator. You can use it through a laminator but what I love about this and not using the hot laminator is I get um, I get more depth with this particular transfer gel. So I'm applying it through the stencil to the four different colors um, and I always do extra because I am a putz in my scrapbook room and no matter what I do, no matter where I lay it, I always end up sticking my finger, sticking a piece of paper, sticking something into one of my projects um, and then ruining the gel and the impression. Um, and I will do this on this video and you will see it. Um, so that is the those are the geometric shapes that I'm going to use. Now I want to use these um, Gina K stencils, stamps, and uh, dies. I am not going to use the die because the die is going to flatten this, which I don't want to do. So to save you time, I'm just going to stamp one or two of these. Um, this is the donut stamp, and I'm stamping it using my Distress Oxides there. And I will um, just fast forward this through the other two after I show you this, but it's the exact same process, just using each of those four colors. And now I am using the stencil that coordinates with that stamp. There's also a die that coordinates with it. Um, and I'm going to use both the frosted um, icing on the donut as well as the sprinkles on the donut. See right there, I stuck that piece of paper into it and I was like, darn it. Oh, and before I forget, I highly recommend, I did not show you this, but between each use, so I'm switching stencils, but I went and I washed my, um, my stencil before I did this. Make sure as soon as you're done, the sooner you wash the stencil with hot water, hot soapy water, the better off you are going to be at getting as little residue left on that stencil as possible. Um, so these are my frosted donuts and you can see I cut them because I knew that um, I was going, I didn't want to get my stencil smushed on top of each of the different colors there. Um, I, I've done this before <laughs> and suffered the consequences. And now I am putting the sprinkles. So there's sprinkles on the navy and yellow donut and then there is um, icing on top of the pink and the uh, mint donut. So while those are drying, I've already gone and I've washed my stencil. Again, wash your stencil as soon as you can while they're drying and it takes an hour for these to dry. Make sure you do not tempt yourself to, do, to get to them too early. So I make sure that I have layout to create while they are drying, which is exactly why I'm showing you not the next step in that foiling process because the next step is wait for them to dry 60 minutes. Set your timer for 60 minutes. And it doesn't have to be exactly 60 minutes. It's or until they are clear. However, um, definitely give yourself air more on the time of extra than under because you will be disappointed. So what I've done is I've just framed out my layout. Um, I wanted to have, there's a lot of um, color in this layout and I like to ground my layouts and so I, I framed it um, and I have a digital cut file that says class of 2021 and now I am looking for a uh, pattern paper. Just I just want a teeny amount of pattern to stick through um, to back the photo with. I go with this yellow, although as I was <laughs> editing the video, I really, really, really liked the hot pink as well. Um, and I think the reason I went with the yellow was because the yellow is a, um, a triad contrast on the color wheel to the red that is most prominent, the, really the most prominent um, color on the right hand side of that photo there. Um, so 
I think that's why I went with the yellow, but again, I really liked the pink. So I have waited my hour. I've had to go off and do some other things. And you can see, I actually have my laminator here. My intent had been to use the laminator, but in sticking um, these, in sticking the foil down, and remember, whenever you're using ThermoWeb foil, you want to make sure that it's the colored side out. The silver is what backs all of them, and so it's silver side down or color side out. And so I put it down wrong by accident, and I lifted it up, and I was like, ooh, it's stuck. So the key to this is you want it to still be a little bit tacky, a teeny, teeny, tiny bit tacky. So you want it to be clear and tacky, the Duo Transfer Gel. And then you just lightly rub with your finger. I don't recommend using your nail. Um, and see how quickly it just picks that up. And you'll see in the close-ups how by not running it through the laminator and not running it through my... Um, die cup machine, I am able to get the texture on there. So it's like using texture paste as well, which is perfect for the donuts because it gives you that more 3D reality of the donuts. Um, so I was tickled pink when I discovered this. Um, and again, it was an accident because you saw my hot laminator. I absolutely meant to put it through the laminator. Um, I, and the reason I don't use the die, the manual dies that coordinate with those donuts is because I still hadn't, um, given it enough time to dry and I was worried that it literally would flatten, um, the, the transfer gel and therefore flatten the image and I didn't want it flattened. So, um, just tips to the wise there. Um, so these are the Vicky Booten dies. Uh, stencils that I used. Again, I'm using the same Marker Forte foil. Um, I like that this foil has texture to it. It's kind of like waves. In fact, I think it would be perfect for puddles um, or some of my swimming layouts even for the of the kids. Um, but this is what I was working on. It also comes in silver. So you can get the new Marker Forte in both gold and silver. So be sure to head over to the um, Thermo Web Shop to check out those new foils that are being released there. Um, so I am using a two and a half inch circle punch. They are perfect. They are the perfect size for those Vicky Booten um, circles there. Uh, and then I'm just fussy cutting these donuts because it's a simple, easy circle cut, really. Um, I probably could have just found a die that coordinated, but I kind of liked the asymmetric, it's not a perfect circle, um, to go with the donuts there. So these are going to be embellishments for the rest of this layout that you saw me start um, while I was waiting for my Duo Transfer Gel to dry. Uh, so the story behind this, um, the, the, while you see Class of 2021, um, the, the title of the layout is actually going to come towards the very end and it's called Grad Dozen. So last Thursday, um, if you wore your cap and gown to Krispy Kreme, um, they gave away a dozen donuts to each graduate. And so my son, who goes swimming at some ungodly hour in the morning, I think practice begins at 4.45 and ends at 6.45, um, they all, all the seniors from his um, swim group got together and um, went to Krispy Kreme to claim their free dozen donuts. Um, and so, and it's not all of the seniors, but the seniors that are in his group that are friends that went. Um, and so I liked the way that the circles coordinated with it. I liked the way that the foil added that celebratory feel of the beginning of graduation events. Um, so I've put down the foiled pieces and now I am just using, this is actually a, um, it's one of those circles with a, it's like from a, uh, a, a ribbon, um, I forget what they're called. It's got the, the zigzag edge around the circle. Um, so I've put three of those uh, to try and create a visual trio. And my um, Gina, Gina Kay, 
foam double-sided tape. I love this stuff. I go through that stuff like I go through um, the rest of my adhesive. I use it a lot to pop up elements. I'm going to pop three elements up off the page, um, again, just to add some depth. I also like to add that depth when you're using the same shape multiple times because it adds some contrast to the page there. So it just so happens that um, in essence, what, what this ends up being is it ends up being a column down the middle of the page. And then you have the circles on either side um, that are kind of like confetti in a way, falling, um, again, adding to that celebratory feel. And I'm going to add a mix of these uh, foiled elements that I've created on my own, as well as elements from this collection. This is the One Fine, One Fine Day collection from my mind's eye. Um, it's something I picked up from Tuesday morning, so I am definitely doing some Tuesday morning stash fashion here. Um, again, more of that awesome ThermoWeb Gina K foam. Now, there is some new foam that has been released from ThermoWeb. I have not gotten my hot little hands on it yet, um, but as soon as I get to use that, I will absolutely do a review of it for you of the, um, the iCraft ThermoWeb foam tape versus uh, this Gina K stuff that I have here. So my original tent had been for this yellow donut to provide some contrast to that very, um, very dark blue that just kind of stands out at you in the middle of the page, but I didn't like it. Um, the O is more of an oval and the donut is more of a circle and I just didn't like the way that they went together. It was too much of a contrast. Um, it was a nice color contrast, but it was a poor shape contrast. So I have some labels here from LA Studio. Um, it, I am a big LA Studio label fan. Um, I use them everywhere. Uh, and I thought maybe this would go down the bottom and that I would journal above it, but it ruins the column that I end up creating. So in amongst all of the embellishments that I've got, I've got that fun banner that says fun. I like the way that the baker's twine moving across the page adds a, a darker element that goes nicely to provide some contrast to that class of 2021 or brings that darkness somewhere else. Um, but I also like the way that it sort of it, it takes your eye from this giant blob in the center of the layout. And by blob, I don't mean blob negatively. Um, so this Pen, it's not a pennant. What are they called? I can't think what they're called. Anyway, that says yay um, is a really bright yellow and it's a nice contrast to that dark blue in class of 2021. There's some flowers. There's um, that was a button that I put down and I liked it, but it's the only thing that's that color really on the page and so it didn't go. Um, and this says I can't remember what it says, happiness or something, something to do with happiness today. Um, uh, and I should have gone with my first thought and left it there because that's exactly where it ends up going is that the book, uh, connecting the 202. Um, and again, it softens the glaring darkness of that class of 2021 that's on the page there. Um, so just adhering down with my Gina K dot roller, permanent dot roller, um, my my other circles and now I'm using my ultra bond um, I love ultra bond for adhering baker's twine I use it all the time um, it does dry clear and it actually dries pretty fast I don't have to hold this down for too long normally I would wrap the twine around the page and then secure it uh, with some purple tape or tape. Um, literally, I've just trimmed the edges here uh, because it's a very bulky baker's twine and I didn't want to, uh, that bulk at the top of the page there. So I'm looking for one of my four by six cards from LE Studio to put my journaling. Um, you can see the one that I started with and then I found this one with that lovely dark frame with the dark blue in it um, and that is the one that I go with. But what I'm bothered by is the fact that it says story number one, story number two, story number three, and I knew I was going to cut it off at story number two, and I thought, well, that's silly because I don't have two stories to tell about this, and then I thought, well, that's also silly because who says you have to be confined by that, so just cut it off where you want it and just journal, um, and don't worry about having to have multiple stories with that. So that's exactly what I did. I cut it off, uh, at the bottom of one of those lines because I didn't want it to go into that frame of the page. And uh, I ha now have a 
bit of a gap between 2021 and my journal spot there, that four by six card. So this banner will fill it up nicely and I'm gonna pop that up on foam. And then actually what I end up doing off camera is I get one of my yellow LE Studio labels and I put the date with the label. You'll see it in the close-ups popping up from the top of that card. So this is where I am able to incorporate that yellow donut. It just sort of ties that column together into the circles and they don't seem to abruptly end. It helps them transition all the way down the page. And I will actually go in off camera and um, move, shuffle some things around just a little bit so that the, the circles do actually provide two columns on either side of that very structured column um, with the photo and the journaling and the title. So now this is the actual title um, in the hot pink, that, and it just says Grad Dozen. That's what they were, the Grad Dozen um, that were free just on that particular Thursday. I think it was May 13th. Um, and so uh, these are old, old stickers. Again, I'm just doing some serious stash bashing lately from Evalicious from uh, one of my Cocoa Daisy kits. Uh, so I'm going to put that on the blue because I like the way that it A, breaks up that glaring of the blue. Um, and then I am going to journal in the spot down below. And that is going to wrap that up. So if you have any questions about the technique that I showed you, please don't hesitate to leave them in the box down below. Enjoy the close-ups. Thanks for stopping in today. Come back again soon. Take care.